here we are on the draw, and we have a six land hand, which most decks, this is an auto mulligan. However, we're playing a control deck, so it's a little bit different because we're so hungry for lands, we want to be hitting every single land drop, that this is like a borderline hand, in my opinion. We have a Wandering Fumarole, a main land, uh, two mana removal, so I'm going to try this hand just because you'd much rather be a little bit flooded than mana screwed whatsoever with this Jeskai control deck. And we do have... Once you get to seven, eight lands, normally you still have stuff to do with your lands. Um, we also have ways of of scrying. Here's a Thraven Inspector, so it, it does look like a, we're pretty likely to be playing against blue-white flash here. Um, not an easy matchup, but definitely winnable. Um... So, we really want to try to keep Gideon off the table. And there's a Copter. So, we, we do have this Harness Lightning in our hand to potentially answer the Smuggler's Copter. But we also have to be worried about Spell Queller, Selfless Spirit. There's a number of cards that are going to disrupt our game plan here. But before our opponent attacks, we do want to attempt this Harness Lightning. See if our opponent has a response. Alright, so it is going to be a counter spell, so the Copter is going to come through for a hit. And it looks like our opponent may have been missing a land drop, unclear. So we'll see if that third land, if our opponent does have that third land. Never mind, our opponent wasn't missing a land drop. Yes. They discarded a, a prairie stream. And Void Shatter the draw. So that's that's an interesting one, and it makes us think we probably want to play this Aether Hub to hold up the Void, Sh void Shatter here. It's going to mean that we have to use the energy this turn, though, either to cast the Stasis Snare or the Void Shatter. We do see Gideon Mana available to our opponent, so I think we want to just take the hit from the Copter. And then end of turn, we can attempt to Stasis Snare if our opponent doesn't play anything. So, there's a Selfless Spirit. I think we want to just let this resolve and still go for the Stasis Snare. It's a little bit annoying that since our opponent didn't have Gideon, we were forced to take some extra damage because have, if we knew our, the exact contents of our opponent's hand, we would have gone for the immediate stasis snare, and that would have stopped the three damage and a loot. But here we're still holding up Void Shatter, and then we can attention. We now that our opponent's passing. We want to go for this Glimmer of Genius. And we'll see if our opponent has a response. There's so much our, that our opponent could have, something like Spell Queller. Our opponent could also have Avacyn Mana available. But instead it's a Revolutionary Rebuff, so there were a lot of options there. And this is a spot where I think, because we don't have a lot going on, we want to just go ahead and, and jam Jace. Unraveler of Secrets. And notably, this can't be spell colored, so it is going to enter play. And we've got a bit of a choice whether we want to tick it up or not. Um, we could bounce the Selfless Spirit, but I, I like actually ticking it up. Let's go with that line. And there's a Fumigate on top. I think we want that one. It seems better than a land or something. It, 
even though we know about our opponent's selfless spirit. Although here's a spell queller, which is a little bit annoying. So our opponent can now pressure our Jace pretty effectively and has two cards left in hand. So kind of close. It depends really what, what those last two cards are for our opponent and how they want to approach this attack step. But it looks like all all of the creatures are coming at our face here. And there's a follow-up Gideon. So pretty tough spot here. Um, so I, th I think we have to go for bouncing a creature. Even though we don't really want to, um, we could also go for upping Jace. But if we go bounce Night Ally, attack Gideon with Wander and Fumarol, we're dead on the crackback. So I like going ahead and attempting to bounce the Selfless Spirit. Now, if our opponent sacrifices it in response, then um, we're kind of in a in a really bad spot, but okay. They did not sacrifice in response, so we can... We're still in a bad spot uh, because of this Gideon, but we can we can at least fumigate away this board. And that's going to put us at 8. So we're not, we're not dead here. Um, so we'll see if our opponent wants to get rid of the Jace or just go to us with the Gideon attack here. It looks like it's coming to us, so that's going to put us down to three. And we kind of... This Gideon is going to be tr trouble. Like I said, we really wanted to keep this off the board. We weren't able to. Um, so let's go ahead, tick up our Jace, see what we can find here. Don't want this basic. And there's a counterspell, so... Just not what we wanted there. And we're kind of forced to pass the turn back and hope for the best, essentially. And our opponent is going to actually go for the emblem here. So now the, the selfless spirit is going to be able to come, ac come across for th the final points. All right, frustrating, frustrating game there. So mo moving on to our sideboard, we are going to be on the play. So that's a nice luxury to have. Um, so I like cutting the sum the one summary dismissal because our opponent isn't playing stuff like Emrakul. Um, the Radiant Flames also isn't necessary. Our opponent, this deck, the Blue Red Flash deck doesn't often go that wide, or if they do, it's with cards like Smuggler's Copters, um, or Gideon, stuff like that. Um, so, even stuff like Fumigate is, is definitely cuttable. Now, we want the one of Tears of Alicut in the board, and I like boarding in all of the Spell Quellers. Spell Quellers pretty good. And then we're on the play, so we can actually just... We can beat them at their own game and try to board in Gideon's. So, I like taking out the Fumigate. And we can board in Linvala is also an option. So I like that a little bit more than Descend Upon the Sinful. And I don't like boarding in more than this amount of 6 drops. This is already quite a... Quite, we already have quite a few 6 drops in our, in our deck. Um... Emulate and Glare and Blessed Alliance are kind of fragile just because of opposing copies of Spellqueller. We really don't want these cards to get Spellquellered. Revolutionary Rebuff is also not that great, so we've got some options to play around with. I like boarding in a couple of Gideons. Um, we also have another Negate in the board, which we could go to, but I don't think we want to. Uh, we definitely don't want more than two Negates in our deck here. So, because we're on the bl on the play, we can go to the Gideons. Um, I like sideboarding out most of these cards here. Um, 
and I think we just want to go ahead and cut one more card. So that could be a negate. So pretty happy with our configuration now on the play. And I like this hand more than our last one. It's not the man in this deck isn't great. We don't have any actual white. We just have the Aether Hubs. But we're gonna keep. We got Harness Lightning into Void Shatter into Glimmer of Genius, so pretty solid. And we're going to play the Aether up here because we want to be able to cast the Harness Lightning if we... If our opponent plays like a Selfless Spirit, we, we're just going to want to Harness Lightning it. But it's going to be a Copter instead. There's the fast land right on time. So we'll get that into play effectively. And if we draw a Gideon, we could still potentially go Plains plus Gideon if... We wanted to. Speaking of Gideon, instead it's Dovin Bond. I actually think that this spot is a little bit weird, but since our opponent has mana up and is representing counters and spell caller, we just want to shift the turn and let our opponent make the first move. So it looks like our, our the first move here is going to be a Thraven Inspector, which I think we want to let this one resolve. Um, our opponent can then crew the copter, but it looks like they're not going to crew the copter, so we're just going to end of turn attempt to Glimmer of Genius here. And it looks like that resolved. Interesting. So we have two spells. I'm generally a fan of just keeping our spells in the spot, so it's Void Shatter and a Harness Lightning. That we're going to put on top. And now we're just going to play this land go type game. We, we, we still don't want to take the bait and play this Dovin Bond. Um, interesting that our opponent didn't want to sacrifice that clue there. Not really sure why that would be. So we, we've got a couple options on how we want to handle this Smuggler's Copter. But I think we want to go for the Harness Lightning. So we'll, we'll, attempt, we'll attempt to run out the Harness Lightning and see what, see what happens here. Now our opponent has Avacyn mana available, but it looks like they're just going to let the Harness Lightning happen. And this Gideon, we're definitely going to want to counter. The question is how we want to counter it, whether we want to use Negate or Void Shatter. I think we want to just Void Shatter it. And then next turn we can play Dovin Bond if we want to with Negate backup. And we also drew Gideons, which we might, we probably just want to play Gideon instead of Dovin Bond here. I like that a lot more. And this is this is how we wanted to set it up because our opponent basically went for their big play for Gideon, but that forced them to tap out. And because we had all our mana up, we had plenty of options. We were able to prevent them from getting that Gideon. Now, this Gideon may happen. Um... We have a negate, so we can attempt to just negate it here. So I'm going to go for the negate and see what our opponent does. It looks like the negate is going to resolve. So that is definitely good news. And we're in, we're in the driver's seat here for sure. So we can put pressure on our opponent now with our Gideon.
And the question is, do we want to also play Dovenbon here? I actually think we we do want to want to get this Dovenbon into play. Um, so yeah, let's go for it. And even though our opponent can cast something on their turn, it's hard to see what we're too worried about. We have Stasis Snare in our hand. Um, if our opponent plays a Gideon at this point, it's not going to really do all that much. Um, so it looks like our opponent does have Gideon. That's perfectly fine. Um, so it looks like they had a, a, a Gideon-heavy draw here. But here's a Gearhawk for us. So that's a nice one to pick up. And our opponent's got three cards in hand. So we've got a few different ways we can handle this situation. I like actually just minus wanting Dovin Bond because we do want to. Drawing cards is always nice, and there's we picked up a spell color. Which is definitely a good pickup. So we don't need to, we don't really need to kill the Gideon immediately. We can just kind of let this Gideon standoff happen, but we also have Dovenbon as well. And then we have end of turn effects as well. This this Torrential Gearhawk, our opponent isn't going to have that many different ways to counter, counter it. And now that our opponent has aggressively made their Gideon into a 5-5, we can also just go at, go for the stasis snare on it. So I actually like that play. So we'll go for we'll go for the stasis snare and see how our opponent reacts to it. And it looks like it's just going to resolve here. So we've also got Void Shatter and Spell Queller back up while our opponent has only three cards left in their hand. So great spot. Um, we can just go ahead and Void Shatter this Jace. And clearly we've taken command of this game. Um, I don't think that there's really much our opponent could possibly do at this point. At this stage. Alright, there's a stasis snare. We can go ahead and we we could we could spell queller it, but I like actually just getting the gear hulk into play. And it's just yep, that's gonna that's gonna be the the game there. So we were able to tie it up. Pretty interesting couple of games so far. Um, we've seen how important getting the Planeswalkers down are. Now, because we're on the draw, we have to rethink our strategy a little bit with our Planeswalkers. Um, and so we've obviously got access to a bunch of format of Planeswalkers, but we don't necessarily want them all. Negate is... Solid, but it doesn't counter Smuggler's Copter, which is a little bit annoying. We could go to some of our two mana removal if we want. I like boarding in an another Gideon. Um, and I think that Blessed Alliance is also a reasonable choice to make as well. Um, so in terms of cards, we would want to take out in this scenario. I think we want to just shave a couple of the format of Planeswalkers. They're just not quite as good when we're on the draw. And we'll go with this. All 
Alright, so we've got a two mana counter spell here in the gate. Basically, we're just going to try to hope not to get overrun early. Um, it's a pretty back and forth game that normally goes on here. And there's a Harness Lightning. We're missing the red mana, which is gonna be a little bit frustrating at the moment because we'd like to be able to cast this Harness Lightning. But it looks like our opponent just has planes right now. Even the, so, we're we're both really stuck on lands pretty badly at this point. But our opponent luckily found that island, and so that's pretty bad news from where we're sitting. And is now just passing the turn. So we could play our spellcaller, but I, I think we just have to untap. And unfortunately, we basically just bricked off. Um, so we are going to have to discard here, assuming that our opponent doesn't do anything. There's a spell queller, so we can we might as well just just play our spell queller to counter the spell queller of our opponents. But we really, need, like I said, the reason why we kept the original hand is because this deck needs to hit land drops so badly and we just didn't have them there's there's the Gideon mm -hmm. so had we hit our land drops we would be in a in a good spot I think this game but instead it is not looking too good um, we could attack with the spell color into the Gideon Not really where we want to be, but sure, we'll, we'll try it. And just going to pass the turn. Once you go to discard, you know the game's almost over, but we'll uh, make our opponent play this one out. And the thing about Glimmer is it really helps you get to those 5th and 6th land drops because you can always scry them, but it is a 4 mana card, different than Anticipate, which is the the better mana fixer, but uh, yeah, we're just going to concede here. Um, unfortunate to get a little bit mana screwed here. 